So the question I'm looking at today is how dangerous is the Minnesota Timberwolves, the current number one seed in the Western Conference, if the playoffs were to start today? They would be the number one seed, home court advantage in the Western Conference, if the playoffs start today, talking about the Minnesota Timberwolves. So to answer that question, I got to go back just a couple years ago. The Utah Jazz was the number one seed in the Western Conference. They were anchored by Rudy Gobert at center, multiple time player, defensive player of the year. And at point, running the show, running the offense, making sure everybody was in the right position, making sure they're not a high turnover team, getting good shots all the time, was none other than Mike Conn. Then they, this, the Jazz, they just didn't perform up to one seed standards. Even though nobody was expecting them to really go to the finals or win a championship with that roster. But they might have been themselves expecting to go to the championship or whatever. But Donovan Mitchell ended up hurting his ankle. And I think they got knocked off by the Clippers. And I think that was the year they ended up. That was the year they were the number one seed for sure. And they went the farthest, I'm pretty sure. But they ended up blowing that up. Make a long story short. They were the number one seed a couple times. Top of the West. But they ended up thinking, we can't go nowhere with this. But their lineup that they had was anchored by Rudy Gobert. And they had Mike Conley run the show. Their star player was Donovan Mitchell. And the year they were supposed to go for the furthest, he hurt his ankle and they blew it up. So now we, we switch to 2024 and we get to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Who do they have anchoring their defense? None other than your boy Rudy, Go Rudy Gobert. Who do they have running the show at point guard? Making sure that the offense is ran efficiently. None other than Mike Conley. Okay, so the Jazz had the star player in Donovan Mitchell. Who do the Timberwolves have? The Timberwolves have Anthony Edwards, a very similar player. I mean, if you, you, you let me know in the comments. If you're taking... Donovan Mitchell or Anthony Edwards, who are you taking? Because they're right, very similar. Both, to me, are uh, are very similar games to one Dwayne Wade. That's who they their games both remind me of. But I think Anthony Edwards is actually a little bit bigger and a little bit taller, and I think he has that he has a little more sauce to his game. Maybe he gonna talk some trash to you. He's He's not going to be nice. He's going to bring the energy. He's going to bring the that dog mentality, possibly, that the Utah Jazz lack. I'm not saying nothing against Donovan Mitchell. He's a great player. But I'm saying if I had to choose between the two, I would slightly take and Edwards, just because I feel like he got that dog mentality where some where he got the ability to get some dudes to really think and really believe we about to win. So then you look at who else the Jazz had. They had Bogdanovich and they had Joe Ingles. Those was that made up their starting lineup. So now we go to the Timberwolves. We upgrade Bogdanovich. And we get to a three-time All-Star, Carl Anthony Towns, who also is, can play defense, who also got size, who you could also rotate to the center position if the teams are trying to do to go bear what the Clippers did to him back in the day by going, five, going uh, stretch, stretching the floor with five, five players at the three-point line and making him guard the three-point line. So, you got that. Then you got Jaden McDaniels versus Joe Ingles from the Utah Jazz team. And me, I'm picking Jaden McDaniels because he's a much better defensive player. That's something the Jazz didn't have was a, was a wing defender. Um, Jaden McDaniels can do that. He can guard the best, the other team's 
best guard, best forward, best wing, who, whatever you're talking about, other than center, and you already got Gobert, you already got Cap for that. Then you add the fact you got Nas Reed coming off the bench. That's more size. And Kyle Anderson coming off the bench who has the size but can also run the point. And the minute, so with that said, I asked the question, how dangerous are the Minnesota Timberwolves? I think the Minnesota Timberwolves are legit dangerous. Last year, they faced the Nuggets in the first round. And I think they, they I know they were without McDaniels because he punched the wall and broke his hand. They were without Gobert, I think, for at least one game. I think he might have got suspended or something for the first game. And the Nuggets had home court. So if the so if the Wolves get home court again this year, they're gonna have to go through Minnesota this time instead of going through Denver. They're gonna have Gobert, whole, the whole rock team available. Anthony Edwards is a year older. I think this is because they got a game against the Wol the the Nuggets last year. The Lakers didn't get a game. They uh, so to me the Wolves are a legit contender. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now are they the favorites? I don't know if I go as far as saying the Wolves are the favorites, but I'm telling you the Wolves are not a team that people are want to face. In the playoffs, they are a legit contender. And if I just had to go off the top top of my head, I I would put them top five offs to be NBA champions in 2024. I'm not saying it's their time now, but it could possibly be. They they have taken that loss in the playoffs. This ain't their first year. They took the loss. Last year in the playoffs, they did. They they went through that loss, so now they have some experience. Plus, you know they got Conley and Gobert with plenty of experience. Conley going all the way back to the Grizzlies, grit and grind time. So that is how dangerous I think the Minnesota Timberwolves are. They are legit contenders. Not the favorites, but legit contenders to be the 2024 NBA champion.